everyone. I wanted to share this story with you also. One in 45 children in the U.S. have autism, according to a new estimate. The increase could be due to changing diagnostic criteria. Now, this is a very touchy subject for me because my grandson is autistic. He seemed like he was born normal, normal baby, and suddenly everything changed when he's about, you know, he was walking, he didn't want shoes on his feet. You know, we thought it was funny because he's trying to kick him off and kick him off, and we thought it was just because it was irritating him. I mean, he was always laughing and smiling and, you know, and trying to talk and cooing and everything changed. About one in 45 children in the United States has an autism spectrum disorder, according to an, a new government estimate of the condition's prevalence in 2014. This new report is based on data collected during a yearly national health interview survey. From interviews from parents about their children, this is the first report of the prevalence of autism in the U.S. to include data from the years 2011 to 2014, according to the researchers from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. Although a new estimate looks like a significant increase from the CDC's previous estimate, which put the autism spectrum disorder rate at 1 in 68 children. The previous estimate was made using data from, the, from a different CDC survey called the Autism and Developmental Disabilities Monitoring Network, which gathers information from children's medical records. This 1 in 68 estimate was reported in 2014, but was based on data collected during 2010. None of the interview surveys and monitoring methods that report increasing prevalence rates of autism in the US looked at why these numbers seem to be rising but one reason could be that awareness of the condition has increased among both parents and healthcare providers which has likely led to more children with the condition being identified said Robert Fitzgerald an epidemiologist in psychiatry at the Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis who is not involved in the research for example, in the past, some kids now considered to have autism, a spectrum, to, spectrum disorder, ASD, may have been labeled as having an intellectual disability, he said. There have also been recent changes in the diagnostic criteria and symptoms used to describe ASD. Beyond vaccines, five things that might really cause autism. Another reason is that the stigma of having autism has decreased. Fitzgerald said previously even doctors may not have wanted to give kids the label of autism leading children's medical records to reflect an under diagnosis of actual cases now there has been an increase in services and support for children who have ASD so this may have resulted in a different mindset he said for the new report nearly 12,000 parents of children ages 3 to 17 from across the US sat down with researchers for face-to-face -face interviews in 2014 and about 11,000 parents were interviewed each year from 2011 to 2013. The rate of autism in 2014, 1 in 45, was higher than the rate researchers found in 2011 to 2013, which is 1 in 80 children with ASD. However, in 2014, the researchers changed the way they collected the data, said the lead author of the new report, Jim Benjamin Zablotsky, an ep epidemiologist, in the Division of Health Interviews Statistics at the National Center for Health Statistics in Hyattsville, Maryland. Therefore, much of what seems like an increase in ASD between 2011 and 2014 was actually a function of the way the interviews asked the questions, Zablowski said. In 2014, the researchers first asked parents whether a doctor or health professor, oh my fucking gosh, whether a doctor or health professional ever told them that their child had an intellectual disability, also known as mental retardation. The second question was a standalone question about ASD. Parents were asked whether to, a health professional ever told them their child had autism, Asperger's disorder, pervasive development disorder, or autism spectrum disorder. The final question asked whether a health professional had ever told the child whether a health professional had ever told parents their child had any other development dis delay. 
When interviewers questioned parents in 2011 through 2013, they asked the same first question about intellectual disability. Then their second question asked about the other developmental delays. In the third question, parents were asked to look at a list of 10 conditions, including autism, ASD, and to indicate whether a health professional ever told them their child had one of these conditions. This approach including of including autism to the checklist instead of asking a specific question about it might have resulted in a name of the condition sometimes getting lost in the shuffle, Zabolowski said. The revised approach was implemented in 2014 to better align with the wording used in other national surveys to estimate the prevalence of autism and to include specific terms that parents may have heard healthcare professionals use when making a diagnosis. Also, putting the autism question second before the questions about other development, developmental delays resulted in 2014 showing a higher prevalence rate for ASD and a lower prevalence rate for other developmental delays. The opposite seemed to occur in 2011 to 2013 when the questions were the other way around. Those data showed a higher reported rate of children with developmental delays and a lower rate of ASD, increased prevalence. Fitzgerald agreed that what looks like an increase in autism's prevalence in 2014 was probably due to the way the interviewers asked the questions. I'm going to let you read the rest of this. It just kind of goes on and on from there. Well, here's the thing. My grandson, Tegan, was born normal. He was a normal baby, normal childhood. He, he crawled on time. He walked on time. I mean, he would laugh, he would play, he made eye contact. Everything changed. I don't know why. It just, suddenly everything just changed. And he was sitting, I mean, he was already to the point of standing, walking around. And he was in the playpen. And I was yelling, Tegan, Tegan. He wouldn't turn around. And I was making noise. I started banging stuff. I'm like, oh my God, is he going deaf? What's going on with him? And so we'd go up behind him and we would like, make noise just suddenly he wouldn't flinch he wouldn't bat an eye nothing and so we thought maybe it was ear problems so they took him in and they did you know they wound up putting tubes in his ears and everything said he had ear problems he still did not respond to anything it just suddenly stopped you know and a lot of people that don't know what autism is and how it affects a family you know, I'll never know my grandson. He's never going to know me. You know, I could say I love you, but does he know what that means? I mean, you know, I could hug him and love on him. He just pushes away. He don't want nothing to do with anybody. It, it only when he has a meltdown, that's when you got to calm him down. We're never going to know each other. And that hurts. That hurts pretty bad. So, I mean, anybody with an autistic child, grandchild, Man, I feel you. I, I really understand. It's one of the hardest things you have to accept. That they're never really going to know who you are. You know, it's... This one, from when he was younger, he would just sit there with cars and spin the wheels. Watch them go around and around. He would separate food. I mean, the things that he did, but... It's like, he could speak a little bit, but does he really know what he's talking about? Unless it has to do with eating, you know? I mean, he's still in diapers. He's six. He's six years old, and he's still in diapers. Because it, it can't, you can't get across to him about the potty training. Yeah, it's a really hard thing to deal with. Anyway, I'm going to leave the link in the box, and thanks for watching. You know, before I go, there's one other question I have. Have you ever looked at the statistics for autism in North Korea? Did you know they have absolutely no cases of autism? But they have nothing to do with the U.S. as well? Or the things we have? Just something that makes me curious. Okay, now I'm going to go. Thanks for watching.